Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to Thermodynamics. Today I'm going to walk you through how you can start from energy conservation and derive uh, conduction, uh, thermal conduction. So we're looking at the problem where we're going to zoom in on a little control volume uh, for a material. Could be, we're going to only consider uh, liquids and solids um, initially between two thermal reservoirs, temperature one and temperature two. If you zoom in on this region, you get you can you can start to break this into uh, smaller parts, and then you just have to do the uh, the energy balance on a small control volume that is uh, shown right here as a slice of this overall material. And so we've been uh, working quite a bit already on doing differential and integrated forms of the energy balance equation. Um, this just takes it one step further, okay? And so what we are going to look at is how does energy change in one slice, and then how can we have many, many slices by each other um, lead to an overall new equation for the transfer of thermal energy from one region to another, driven by gradients and temperature. So suppose for this problem that temperature one that is right here is greater than temperature two that is right here. Um, and then the total, first thing we can do is get some, get some basic nomenclature. The first thing is that the total energy in a slice going to be equal to the energy density. So let's see, we can use E or U or H uh, to denote energy. Let's just stick with E so that it can be a, a equivalent of either of these uh, and we can uh, uh, interchange them, especially if it's a liquid or solid, then the things we'll use later, the heat capacities are roughly equivalent. So let's say that the energy uh, in this small slice is equal to some small energy density that um, is at a position in time in that slice times the volume of this slice. So there's some little e at, at x of t inside of there. And what's the volume of the slice? The volume of the slice is simply a times delta x, where a is the cross-sectional area of this slice, and I've shown that right here, so A corresponds with that region right there. Um, and so you can imagine this as a small slice where you have two surfaces, and then there is heat uh, transfer uh, through that surface. We're gonna decouple this from mass transfer. Let's start with this being a solid. Um, so then we just use our overall balance equation uh, on this little shell. So you're going to hear about this in other classes in the future. Uh, it's called a, a shell balance equation. Um, so one thing that we're going to we're going to do is we're going to do a derivative for what's happening inside of this shell. And because it's got uh, two variables, we're going to uh, treat it with partial derivatives because it, it can depend on more than one independent variable. On this side, we're going to jump ahead. Instead of going through all the delta t's, which we can do in a shell balance, we're just going to know that in some small change in time, there is a flow of, of, um, of uh, energy into and out of this. And if we then make the substitution, this is del by del t of e x comma t times a times delta x. Okay, that's the left-hand side. What about the right-hand side? So let's move this over here, and let's talk about the, the, the right-hand side, about the flows of this. x comma t times a times delta x equals. Well, we have, I'm going to scroll up here. On the left-hand side, denoting this small q and this little q with the dots on. So q is the amount of heat energy flowing across this boundary that is shown right here in the time interval. And then there's also some heat energy that we're going to define as leaving at the other boundary at some other position, x plus delta x, and the initial position is at x. Also, within this volume, we could have chemical reactions or some other supply of the, uh, the heat energy. So let's talk about q, x, comma, t. 
uh, times A, because this is going to be uh, heat flow per unit area, so it's times A for the area of the cross-section, minus what's leaving, Q, and X plus delta X, comma, at some time T, times area there as well, okay, plus Q uh, dot, um, within that volume, we're going to say it happens in that, and this is a, a heat generation per unit volume, so it's going to be times area times delta X, so that we can have the total amount of heat flow by generation. This is generation, consumption, uh, in volume, and this is across the boundaries, across the, the boundaries of that little control volume. So what can we do now? Well, simply divide by A times delta X, okay? You divide by A delta X, and you'll end up with a new equation, del E del T equals Q at X comma T minus Q at X plus delta X at that time interval, all divided by delta X plus, oh, I forgot, forget my dots, Q dot X T. Now, simply uh, rearranging this and then listening to the eagles, we know that uh, this is equal to minus uh, Q dot at X plus delta X comma T minus Q dot at X comma T plus Q dot X comma T all divided by delta X. Take the limit one more time. Delta X goes to zero. Take it to the limit equals minus del Q del X. Uh, plus Q dot at X comma T equals this whole energy term. This now becomes our differential form. I'm going to be explicit here. This is at X comma T as X gets really small of, of the, the, uh, heat flow um, and temperature flow due to gradients and due to um, the transfer of thermal energy in a liquid or solid material. Problem is, we have one equation here. Okay. But we have two unknowns. We don't know Q and we don't know E. We don't know E. So we need some more info. We need some more info. Okay. So what we're going to use here is that uh, du hat d temperature at constant V or dh hat at constant temperature uh, at constant pressure, at, with DHDT at constant pressure, this is equal to uh, the definition of the heat capacity, specific heat capacity, and this is the constant pressure heat capacity, but for uh, liquid or solid and compressible, uh, pardon me there, uh, CV is approximately CP. So we're just going to use them interchangeably here. Um, and then we can replace this little e, x comma time, uh, times a, times delta x, with the equivalent in terms of the heat capacity. I'll just use a c over bar to denote that it could be either cp or cv. Just call it c. Let's say c can depend on x times the temperature, x comma t, times the density, because this is per unit mass, times uh, the volume there. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to have then our little energy, because the A delta X will cancel out at X comma T, is simply equal to the heat capacity, specific heat capacity, times the temperature at that point, uh, times the density. 
to get it to work and to work energy per unit density. That, now there's a little there's a little um, thing I'm missing here. When you're doing an integral of one of these, you're going to have a, 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 a some CP times temperature which we have here minus some reference temperature. Um, but uh, these will all eventually cancel out. So I'm just getting rid of them to make the notes easier to follow early on. But if you want to go through and include reference temperature throughout, um, feel free to do so. And you'll see, take the derivative of a reference temperature, which is a constant, then the derivative of this goes to zero. So we replace this relationship into our energy balance equation. We end up with C bar x rho of x partial of the temperature with respect to time del t equals minus del q del x plus q x comma t. We're still, all we did was replace e with t. We still are in trouble. Now we have two unknowns. We have T and Q instead of E and Q. So we still need another relationship to figure out what to do with Q. Okay. And in the note um, in a video that follows, we're going to describe Fourier. This is uh, going to be where we stop uh, for this one.